graduation is an important point in our lives. It marks a time for us to move forward, to achieve our dreams, uh, and to build a future for ourselves. However, graduation also marks another point in our lives, to reminisce. So let's start with our journey throughout SD. So the beginning of our journey wouldn't quite be the same without some of our most memorable teachers. For instance, I will always remember Connie to be a gentle and caring person and to be someone that's not just a teacher. In fact, I even told her that she reminded me of my grandma, in a good way, of course. And although first grade may have seemed to be quite the relaxing year for us, especially in times where people like Pa Echo used to sing to us while he played his guitar, um, we did teach, we were taught the important lessons of friendship and the importance of learning as well. Um, this was quite the stark contrast uh, to second grade, uh, where we decided to explore our individual personalities and skills. I remember people competing to see who was the best dancer in Mr. John's Glee Club, or who could take care of their mealworms the longest, or even who could log the most books in their reading logs, even though I'm pretty sure all of us cheated a bit in that, and even who was the bugliest bug. Third grade went by pretty quickly as well. I'm sure everyone is either too busy playing I Spy in Miss Kiki's computer class, or celebrating with potlucks, or togas, or parties dressed in togas. But my most notable memory would probably have to be in language class, where I remember the boys snickering as we looked up a certain P word that equates to male genitalia in our new dictionaries. Fourth grade is also quite memorable to me. Our new teacher, Mr. Ab, happened to give goody two-shoes like me uh, detention during recess for small things. But this did teach me a good lesson about um, responsibility. And if you look hard enough, you can still find his English language art classes online, which are quite entertaining to watch. Nonetheless, um, it did feel cool when I got to paint on his window and see you guys stare at me in awe. Um, and of course, fifth grade is also definitely one of the most exciting. We were finally on top of the SDF food chain after all. And um, the boys will probably remember wrestling on Miss Pat's couch. And poor Miss Pat got so tired of us. Or the others will probably remember chilling in Mr. Vince's room because he had bean bags, which we had just discovered. Until, of course, someone let a cat defecate on it. And um, he didn't let us sit on his bean bags for a while after that. And in fact, content wise, fifth grade is also quite memorable to me. I'm sure you guys also remember the Imaginary Animals Project, or at least a thing or two about the Phantom Tall Booth uh, and the Island of the Blue Dolphins. Also, who could forget Miss Malati's exciting Mandarin lessons? And I think at the end of our estate journey, everyone was feeling at least a bit of pressure from the Ujian National, but it was fine because, I mean, everyone miraculously passed anyway. And our first real CSW, which was in Jogja, uh, was also quite amusing. I mean, of course, us, Batch 10, uh, would be grounded during our first ever CSW. Iconic. And lastly, we ended our SDET journey with a bittersweet little graduation in which Canon in D was played on loop for hours only to be topped off uh, by singing the very infamous song It's Time to Begin, which everyone happily blamed Kevin Lim for. I actually moved to Mentari during middle school and it was indeed a warm welcome and a smooth transition from my primary years in between, of course, the fascination with my accent. I did feel a sense of close-knit community during those years. Middle school is the time where we are adjusting to becoming an adult, the start of our teenage years. However, in between episodes of supposed teenage angst, we try to remind ourselves that we are still young at heart, that we still have time to have fun. I remember meeting an 11th grader in the canteen once when I was in grade nine, and he advised me to still have fun while you can. Didn't really think much of it then, but I came to realize now. So for those who have children in the middle years, or who are in the middle years, no matter how much summative assessments come your way, don't forget to have fun while you still can. And amongst those serious times during middle school, there were dollops of rather funny memories, among them which I recall, firstly the don't stop believing flash mob in the canteen for a music project, which was quite embarrassing, in which I was appointed for a bass voice, but the audience could hardly hear, could hardly hear me, probably because I can't sing. Followed by a student of ours named Kater, who disappeared for three months, and he came back to apologize that he got stuck in traffic for three months. And finally, Orel's iconic fortune-telling booth in the Chinese Bazaar, where we did generate most of our revenue from. 
And of course, some fond memories to reminisce upon, such as Marshall's English classes, where we would all sit in a circle on the carpet and he told us stories, CSW Bali, Kalimantan, and China. Sadly, we had to end our middle school journey with the last homeroom challenge we could ever join and was ambivalent about the challenges that lay ahead in high school. When I think of our SMI years, the first thing I remember is ATL week. Months of planning just to organize one week. But thinking about it now, ATL week wasn't just about that. ATL week was the one thing that really brought our batch together as we set up the haunted house, scrubbed the floors that we made a mess in, guided our edit class and their activities, and saw Vian in a mermaid costume. Our first year in SMA was also, um, it involved our first major IB assessment, the personal project. Something not all of us enjoyed, but we were all rewarded with our last CSW trip to Vietnam. After we spent more than a week abroad learning, we went home to face the grueling rehearsals of the moving up ceremony and the Zoot Suit Ride dance. However, I also recall moments such as stories of Mr. Sandeep's classes, or when Krishna won the spelling bee after so many people underestimated him, and the rumor that Miss Luvina's absence was because of a Bajai accident. Despite all these experiences, I don't think we were really prepared for, to face DP. Working on and submitting our IAs, presenting our TOK, trying to meet the numerous EE deadlines, and of course, having to attend the dreadful EE prison. And yet, on top of all of this, we still had to apply for college. It was certainly common to see students in the lounge stressing over the requirements they had to meet or contemplating what pro program they should take. Personally, I remember going to the office repeatedly just to make sure I had my PGs on time. However, on the bright side, we did not go through these challenges alone. Whether it was when we always asked for help from Ms. Sylvia in the lab, or when we coincidentally met each other in cafes as we studied, or as we went through past papers before our mocks, there was always a helping hand provided for us. Another favorite memory of mine would be all the times we worked together as a batch. Although most of these moments were because we were somehow forced to do it for cast, I think our time spent bonding made up for it. This includes the holiday concert, or when we became team leaders for the Mariputi Day and Mini Olympics, and also for those who held the Sing Ping charity concert. But of, of course, I won't forget to mention football when it comes to DP. I mean, the boys did leave a good win for our batch. As, and as for the girls, despite being rookies, it was definitely a proud moment for all of us when we finally established a girls team that many of us have dreamed of since our SD years. For me, there's nothing more memorable than ordering food and drinks through Gojek and enjoying them in the student lounge. Whether it was trying new restaurants or consistently ordering the same coffee, boba, or matcha latte every day. Not to mention all those times we went to Circle K after dismissal. Of course, a very recent recollection was when we tried to sign a petition as a batch. These memories, these experiences that we went through together are those that we'll cherish forever. Maybe we'll go our own ways in the future, but I'm happy to say that these past two years won't be forgotten. Our entire journey traversed the highest of mountains and deepest of rivers. Well, quite literally, when we visited Haivan Pass in CSW Vietnam and went rafting during CSW Bali. But wherever, we, but wherever we were, it has always been a beautiful view. On behalf of Batch 2020, we would like to extend our most sincere gratitude to our parents who have, of course, supported us and more importantly, coped with our bapper after school at home. We would also like to extend our heartfelt thanks for the support of our teachers who have made our learning journey possible. And we doff our hats to our friends and peers for accompanying us and supporting us along the way. As our acceptance that has come in and we move on to obtain degrees and bigger things in life, these funny and fond memories from our Mentari journey hold a special place in our hearts and in our lives. Thank you. <laughs>